I'm Paula Radcliffe and guess where I am? It is a huge honour for me to be back here in Dubai for this 23rd edition of the Dubai Marathon, kicking off the 2024 marathon season in style. We have some phenomenal fields lined up, back for the first time since 2020 on that iconic, fast, flat Jumeirah Beach Road which has produced so many exceptional times and finishes over the years. On the women's side, I for sure believe that we could see the course record tumble. We have returning defending champion Deradida up against second place from last year, Ruti Baga, renewing that rivalry with others thrown into the mix. And on the men's side, an extremely deep field, a lot riding on this race. There are Olympic places up for grabs. People want to come out and race very quickly and to be able to set their stall out early in this Olympic year and I think that we can see another course record tumble for sure on the men's side, maybe even faster than that. We are of course in the United Arab Emirates, Dubai, perhaps the most famous of the uh, Emirates in many respects for a sporting uh, profile. In any case, Paula Radcliffe and myself, Tim Hutchings, will be with you for these next uh, several hours covering the elite races here in the capital of Dubai, Dubai City itself. And Paula beside me, looking forward to fabulous fast racing at the front end of these elite races, which get underway in about 14 minutes time on the hour at 6 a.m. local time, Paula. Exactly, and really looking forward to this 23rd edition of the Dubai Marathon with some stunning fields assembled and ready to kick off this 2024 marathon season building towards that all important Olympic marathon in Paris. Well, it's just before 10 to 6 in the morning here in Dubai. It's still dark, the sun is not up yet, but it's a, a beautiful morning. The, uh, it's pretty still, the temperature is around 18 degrees centigrade. Paula telling me here that the humidity though is quite high at about 80% and that is uh, perhaps the biggest concern for the athletes, not the temperature which we believe will stay around 18, 19 degrees for the next couple of hours Paula. Absolutely, the humidity is currently at 80%, that's going to be the highest. It will start to drop off as the sun starts to rise and the dew point is around 14 degrees which is that all important factor it makes it harder the closer the actual temperature is to the dew point well let's have a look at the schedule there it is the wheelchair athletes get underway in about six or seven minutes time the marathon elite race is underway at six o'clock on the hour in about 11 or 12 minutes time men and women running together dubai marathon is a one of the part sport history in dubai from beginning until now we are looking for, all of us, we are looking for to have one of the good marathons in the world. I'm from the United States, Detroit, Michigan to be exact, and I come to Dubai just to run this marathon. Hi, I'm Aura from Finland. I live here in Dubai and I'm so excited to run the Dubai Marathon. This first time I'm uh, enjoying the Dubai Marathon. I'm so excited. Dubai Marathon! <laughs> It's truly fantastic that we're back in Umsakim for the start and finish of this edition of the Dubai Marathon. We're back to the familiar course that we've had in previous years. After last year, which was fast and we saw great racing, but here we know we're going to be out along those familiar fast, flat sections, out and back sections too, like the Jumeirah Beach Road, for example. And the surface here is really good, really steady surface. The athletes like this to get a nice rhythm going and to be able to maintain that quick tempo that might take them down towards course records. Absolutely dead flat, very, very high caliber surface. Apparently, Haile Gebre Selassie, when he raced here a few times and won two or three times, said he'd never run on such a good quality road surface. Well, the wheelchair race, that's uh, due off in about two or three minutes time at 5.55. There we see a start list and get shippers. Um, he's a former actual para triathlete. Um, suffered a spinal cord injury in a flying accident in 2004 and since then worked his way up to silver in the 2016 Paralympic Games and then also notable Badia al Hassani from the United Arab Emirates there. The rest of the, the male racers coming from China and indeed our only female wheelchair racer Tian Yahuan from China. She's 25 years old. It is a day when we are expecting very, very fast racing. Conditions are good. Uh, this is the return to this course for the first time in four years. Last year, the uh, course was down at uh, Expo City. 
we're familiar with very, very fast times on this course from uh, all categories. Well, the wheelchair races get underway, just six athletes in that event. It is an ideal circuit for the wheelchair races. This is Jumeirah Beach that you can see behind me. It's a rather windy Jumeirah Beach today and we're certainly hoping it's not going to be like that on Sunday for the Dubai Marathon 2024. But we're back on the Jumeirah Beach course after four years. And that is the fast, flat, tried and tested course which has produced course records of just over two hours and three minutes in the men and two hours 17.08 in the women. Olympic year is always special. Now this year in particular, Paris 2024 in the French capital in midsummer is going to be extra special because it's 40 years since the women's marathon was added to the Olympic program back in Los Angeles 1984. Now in those days the women's world record was just over 2 hours and 24 minutes. Today it is an unbelievable 2 hours 11 minutes and 53 seconds said by Tigi Sosefa of Ethiopia in the Chicago Marathon about three months ago. Now one of the reasons she ran so fast is because of this, or rather something like this. Now this is the down market version of the super shoe. I can't quite afford the real one. Now the, the top of the line has got a carbon fiber in this midsole. But this one has got a plasticated one, but it still gives extra propulsion, which is why we're hoping for a new course record in the 2024 Dubai Marathon. The uh, elite athletes, as there you can see behind the line, getting ready, stripped down and ready for kickoff, so to speak. It's a couple of minutes to six. There's a, a glimpse of the uh, best of the men's race. It is a top field. There are uh, 11 men who have run under 208. We are looking today for everything. We're going to be greedy. We're looking for great racing and we're looking for very fast times. That's the, yes. That's the full pack for any race director. I think so. I mean, it did produce the first seven men under 205 in 2018. And we've seen since then the effect of the shoes on the times in the races as we look up the lineup for the women's race. Yeah, Ruti Aga, the fastest in the race. But funnily enough, Dira Dida is the defending champion. She came here last year and won in 2.21.11, won by 13 seconds. It is going to be very, very fast indeed, this race, as the athletes are under starters' orders now. So great that the Dubai Marathon of 2024 kicks off the road racing season in this Olympic year. On your mark. Well, we're uh, just waiting for the absolute all clear up there. Away they go then. We are underway and racing in Dubai. There are pacemakers, of course. Glorious view of the city of Dubai with the uh, sun due up very, very shortly. But that is the night scene. It's not dissimilar to the one we get from the Athletes Hotel, a quite fantastic hotel. As we see the leader in the wheelchair race. And that is Gert Schippers, who is leading and seems to have built up very substantial lead Go back women. to these elite women now. And uh, just to clarify, I was talking to you about the pacemakers of the uh, men's race, but Paula, 2.17 the pacemakers are going out for this um, this elite women's race. That is the, the target. Yeah, and I think the target undoubtedly there, the course record held by Ruth Chepengatic at 2.17.08. I have set off a little bit outside what we were hoping. I mean... Uh, 258 is 205 pace, 258 per kilometre, and they're averaging something around 3 minutes 302. So there's that uh, women's elite pack, and uh, it is a high calibre field. Defending champion Dira Dida in there. Well, the men are at uh, 11.57 at 4k, at 3 minutes to that, or just under 3 minutes, and you're at, uh, well, about uh, 15 minutes. So they are going. A little bit slower than men than we would have liked. There it is, 254, that fourth kilometer for this men's pack. Here we go with the There's first that chip. 5k one. mat, they go through in about 14.53 is officially the uh, time there that's come up in the men's race. Here they come towards the turnaround point, the uh, elite men's field. Yes, kip to there. Uh, the last kilometre, three minutes, so still not quite dialed into that sub-205 territory. And there is a beautiful shot of the sky starting to lighten behind the athletes, so not too long now before the sun starts to 
to peek through. It won't really make itself felt, though, until much, much later in the race, which is a good thing for these athletes. 32.18 through that 10 kilometers, so perfect timing. And here is that uh, big men's pack with Kip Tu and Kip Yeager at the front, doing a fine job pulling them along, and they've accelerated, not in a sort of panicky way, but just nice and steadily through that second 5K. The Burj Al Arab in the distance in front of them that they will aim for and then go out past that and then they'll have that to aim for on each of the other laps as they come back around. Glorious shot of the skyline of downtown Dubai there. Goodness me. The women's race to the right of picture, the men to the left of picture, both moving along very nicely. And the women already well inside course record schedule. The men dialing down towards course record schedule. Men's course record, 203.34. There is 15K. Yeah, 44.05. So very, very healthy running now. And I think the significant point being that they are getting quicker with each of these 5K segments. And there's just Jamal falling off the back of that front group which will then make it I think just four women in that lead group and look at that predicted race time now the course record remember 203.34 and look at that 203 just inside 204 now is the predicted time easy to forget that the standards have leapt forward this last couple of years partly because of the shoe technology but a lot of it because of the greater knowledge and training the uh, what do they call it marginal gains so Kip Tu still leading in this uh, men's race. And that pack has whittled down. Now they've gone through halfway in 61.53 and a few bodies beginning to drop away, Paula. In the background, you can see there to the right of picture, uh, athletes just beginning to ease away. And the pack is, well, it was about 14, 15 strong. It's probably now about 12 strong. Group now make that turn, including Ishita. Bahrain, Getnet is in there, Ayalu. Ruti Agut is taking the chance to look around, maybe just checking. Was she checking that Avenig has got her drinks bottle? The others don't seem to have it, perhaps they missed that. Well, both these elite races now, well into the second half, and uh, time to perhaps to start focusing a little bit on the prize money. Since 2000, since the first race, this race in Dubai has handed out over $13 million in prize money. Today, the winners in the men's and women's races get $80,000 US dollars. Now is a critical section, isn't it, in a way, Paul, or I suppose the third quarter of the race, because they can push hard through this section as they, some of the wheelchairs go tearing past them. Now, those wheelchairs are a lap ahead of these uh, athletes. Remember, the wheelchairs go much, much faster for obvious reasons. So the wheelchair racers with, uh, what, one hour 19, nearly one hour 20 on the clock for them, not far uh, away from their finish. Back of that men's lead men's pack, Samuel Fitri is, is having a phenomenal run. 208 personal best, and he's currently hanging with these men running on um, that sub 2-4 pace. And back with the elite women, have we got two away? Certainly looks like it at this point. Deradita, defending champion, not being able to, to go with this leading duo at the moment of Ruti Aga and Katema. That elite men's field making the right hand turn. That's the lead pack making the right hand turn at the southern end of the second section. So when they come back round and have done another loop, that road to the top left, they'll take a left going up there towards the finish line. About, five, about 500 metres up there is the finish line. So now they've negotiated that turn at 26 almost 27 kilometers and uh, they're heading back north again and we've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten in that lead pack this is the wheelchair race a sprint finish they've obviously been watching each other bit of a cat and mouse game because after 42k it just should not be this close so we were looking at skippers earlier who was in the lead but now this is without a doubt i think they are all together the other chinese athletes so we've got jin Hui, we've got uh Yang Zhuan, Luo and Zuma. And the long journey from China justified with that victory. Indeed, was a one, two, three for the Chinese. Dubai was the perfect weather and the perfect temperature for fast racing today and it delivered really well. Xinhua of China winning that in 127.08. Now back to the open race and the elite men's field they're approaching 30k now 
And uh, look at that, the predicted time outside 2.04. So that course record of Muller from four years ago, five years ago, may be as safe. 30K in 128.10. The race is building nicely. About eight or 10 of them making their debut in this men's race. 2.53 taken through to 30K. And there are the splits in the women's race, those kilometer splits and 3.09. Now that suggests uh, quite yeah. some acceleration at the front end here. Ruti Aga. Is she struggling? But I have to say that Tigas Ketima there, the tall figure center of picture, looking very, very relaxed as we see the sole female competitor in that women's wheelchair race coming through to her finish. And this is Tan Yuan of, of China, 25 year old and approaching 30K now in the women's race. And on schedule for breaking the course record by, well, some 30 seconds or more, Afanigas is having a great run here. She's making her debut. The athlete who ran seven half marathons last year. So there, glorious shot of, uh, of Dubai with the Burj Al Arab left of picture. And a bit more of a gathering now of, of this group of men at the front end of the race. Demetra has, has caught up to that group. Is, is that Samuel Fidri is still in there? Fufa's still there, Magas is still there. Gabena, of course, where he has been for most of the race. There at 35k, the split is 143.18. Now, how does that transfer from uh, that 25k split? Well, back to this women's race, and we have got, I think, an individual leader, a breakaway here now from Tigis Ketima. Yes. Ruti Aga struggling back there behind that other pacemaker, that other pale pacemaker. The gap is about 30 meters, 35 meters. Looks to be heading for a clocking way below 220. And uh, possibly a victory here in Dubai. Gobena, Magasa, Dumesha, place your bets. The last two kilometers, three minutes for the 36, 301 for the 37th. They've forgotten the time now, and rightly so. They are racing here in Dubai in this 23rd edition and reaching the real climax of the race. About 5K to go, 4.5K to go. The current leader in the women's race then, Tigist Ketima, 1 hour 51 on the clock. She's heading for a time here, barring disaster of a long way under 2.20. Back to this men's race though, and we're down to two by the looks of things. And uh, it looks to be uh, Dumesha up against uh, Gobena, Adesu Gobena, making his debut. So we could have double debutante victories here today. Finishing straight is significant. It's a long straight in after you make that turn, that 500 meters. I would have liked to have run over that in the couple of days before the race to be able to know what that closing section was like. The danger, of course, if they start playing to cat and mouse too much is that they do allow Magersa, who's at the back of shot, um, to get back into the race. There's that 40K drink station. And uh, mm. yeah, Gobena gets his okay. And Demesha chooses not to. Here is Magersa. He's back in third place. There's about one kilometer to go now here in Dubai 2024. 41.2 kilometers on the clock for the uh, elite men athletes. And the gap is growing now with every stride. And you feel as though in boxing parlance, Lemmy Dumesha now, left of picture, almost out of the picture, has thrown in the towel or his aides would have done in his corner. And Adesu Gobena, surely Paulo, now when you get a gap like that and you recognize it, you glance over your shoulder and you think at last you get this massive surge of adrenaline. You've got your reward. Yeah, absolutely. And then you make the turn, which he's doing now, making this turn around. So it's about 500 meters to race at this point. This is gonna be a magnificent victory from Adesu Gobena Aga, to give him his full name. It's a win. A victory in hand for this athlete, Adesu Gobena. And watch this name, because look at the clock. He's looking strong. He's still looking very in control. No signs of strain. The form for Dumesha in the background has gone somewhat. He's really struggling as he tries to chase this man down and hang on to second place. But this is going to be a comfortable, dominant run, effectively, in the final stages from Adesu Gobena. Adesu Gobena is the winner of Dubai Marathon 2024 in spectacular style. No wonder he's celebrating. As Dumesha comes through for second place and third place will coming through. I think this is Magersa 
coming through to Janie McGuess, another debutante. Absolutely brilliant running from him. And look at the battle for fourth place. The winner, Cobain, second place to measure, third, McGuess, and Fufa coming through. And Fitwi is that back in fifth place. Fufa is going to finish fourth place by the smallest of margins. And Fitwi coming through for a brilliant fifth place. That is a personal best by under two minutes, I think, for Samuel Fitwi and stands him in great stead moving forward in Olympic year. Well, Cobain there celebrating with uh, his supporters. An Ethiopian flag, the banner being thrown across his back. I can confirm that it was Germany's Samuel Fitwi who came in fifth in 2.06.27. That makes him one of the fastest Europeans ever. Well, here is the winning form of Gobena to take that men's title here. And here he is. It was, it was very nice. Uh, the pacemaking was very good. It was very fast. He said he's very happy. And uh, he said today is uh, uh, Christmas, Ethiopian Christmas. And uh, it's a double victory for him. Tigis Kesima then comes towards the line. It will be the quickest debut in the history of marathon running. She's going to be just under 2.16, or as she know, just outside 2.16, I think. It matters not. It's been a brilliant debut from the 25-year-old former middle distance runner. No wonder she kisses the ground here in Dubai. 800-meter bronze medalist becomes the champion in Dubai 2024. She said she is very happy to win uh, her first marathon. Uh, but the, the, the reason that she moved from uh, the track to marathon is because in 800 and 1500, she worked, even though she worked very hard, but when it comes to results, uh, they are not satisfying for her. So she worked hard on, uh, on her preparations and then uh, uh, she became a marathon athlete. And she, she said she didn't expect to win her first marathon, but uh, with the help of God, she made it and she's very happy. Now, are these two athletes, Tigist Ketema and Ruti Aga, running their way into Ethiopia's Olympic team? Will we see them next put on their racing shoes in anger on the streets of Paris in August? But uh, Ruti Aga here, the fastest in the field, second last year, finishes second in 2024. <laughs> and her time, 2.18.08 or 2.18.09, and Dira Dida. The defending champion when the gun went. She is now last year's champion, coming through for third place. One, two, three for Ethiopia in the women's race. Well, what a special day of racing it has been today. Confirmation of the uh, men's result. The Adesu Gobena debutant winning in 2.05.01. Lemme do measure 2.05.20 in second place. Did Jenny Magursa also won on 2.06 there in third place. 2.05.42. A 1-2-3, indeed a 1-2-3-4 for Ethiopia in that men's race. And as you can see, brilliant running from Samuel Fitwi for Germany in fifth place. 2.06.27. And in the women's race, while well, special running, the fastest debut ever. You could almost call it a world record debut run there. 2.16.07 for Tigis Ketema, the former middle distance runner from Ethiopia. She takes the win from Ruti Aga, the fastest in the race before the gun. Ruti Aga's 2.18.09 exactly replicates her time from last October, uh, her personal best. And Dira Dida, last year's winner, taking third place, 2.19.29. The first three, well under 2.20 there, with a great running from another German, Malat Kajeta, 2.21.47. Surely has booked her place, Paula Radcliffe, for, for uh, Germany at the Olympic Games with that run. I would think so, a phenomenal run from her. Yeah, I'm very happy, I'm so excited. It, it was my plan, is for the Olympic qualification. My best time now, like 2.21, I ran, and I was not thinking, I would land like this fast, but thanks God. Very exciting racing here today on the streets of Dubai 2024. The marathon is back with a bang to its old course here beside the coast. We've had a fabulous day. I hope you've enjoyed our coverage too. Thank you for being with us. We'll see you again. Bye bye. Bye.
wonderful experience. Good vibe. I feel great.